Welcome to Will It Work, I'm Kevin. Today we're looking at the Gakin Compact Vision slash TV Boy. Uh, this is an unusual 8-bit system that came out at a time when, uh, you know, it was pre-Nintendo NES, right? It was um, somewhere right after 2600. So it had a very limited sort of game system, probably was trying to be competitive in Japan against maybe the cassette vision that we looked at earlier, as well as um, some of those uh, 1292 or Gemini systems uh, that were out that had processors on the chip. Uh, I don't know too much about um, what's inside this in terms of hardware um, but it does have a very unusual design which I will show you it's fairly uncommon system you won't find this in too many people's collections although you will find them on eBay uh, in fairly good shape uh, but what you won't find is games, or if you do, the games are extremely rare and expensive. Uh, so, um, it has this, so this is the controller, it's four degrees of movement, there's a button on the left, and you have this sort of handle on the right, and this is just the start button up here, kind of sticks a little bit, and uh, you have a power button and a pause button, plus the cartridge port. Also, interestingly enough, it's, um, you know, uh, not running on any sort of batteries. In fact, it has, uh, I believe, a 7.5 volt um, connection. Uh, what I will say is that I actually own two of these. Uh, not because I wanted to buy two of them. What ended up happening was that I initially purchased uh, the first one. And had it for, geez, I don't know, some years. And uh, unfortunately, games never went up for sale anywhere for it. Uh, that I was, when I was looking for them. Uh, the only games I ever did see were, you know, fairly recent and cost somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, $500 each. And there was no way I was paying that. Well, after quite a while, like I said, some years, uh, there was uh, one person selling one of these. This guy was apparently out of the Netherlands. Uh, he had one, and he had a game. And he sold the system and the game for less than what the one guy wants for just an individual game. So I was like, well, two systems are better than one. If I'm going to spend that kind of money, I might as well get an extra system and get the game. So I have one game, and we will try it. It's called 200X. You can see it there. And uh, it does have a venting on the back uh, for the microchips. Now, I don't know. It's maybe the case with the Compact Vision that this is identical in a sense, not a, not identical programmatically, but identical in the sense of what the cassette vision was also doing at the time, which was that you could have um, the processor on the chip, or on the cartridge, uh, and that could either be like a general instruments style, everything is already built into the, to the microchip, or it could be um, more along the lines of it has a programmable ROM like we know with other games systems or it, or it could have a programmable ROM and be uh, on a chip kind of thing like we see with the cassette vision so I don't know these systems they get, get some obscure ones sometimes, and this is definitely one of them. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in here and turn it on, get it connected up to the VCR, get it on channel 95 or whatever. 
We'll see if we can get a picture. Maybe we'll get sound. Maybe we won't. Sort of depends because we're dealing with RF here. But we'll try both of them and see what kind of, you know, one of them hopefully will work. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing here. We'll find out if it works. Here we go. They're looking at the Gakin TV boy. Uh, first one didn't work for me. Uh, the picture on this one's a bit fuzzy. You pick one player or two player. Looks like it's some kind of version of combat with a helicopter. That's innovative. Trying to see if I can get the picture in a little bit better here by messing with the switch box in. Doesn't look like it though. <clears throat> but you kind of get the idea. I mean, you know, had it been new or whatever. Um, let's see here. On the red one. Oh. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, now there's two. Kind of like a poor man's bomber man here. Woo! Oh, now there's three. Hacking away at this system. All right, now so I tried. I tried the other one. I tried the other one, but it uh, I wasn't able to get a picture on it. Let's try it one more time, though. Um, this is channel 96. Let's look at 97, 95. So 96. Now. They do have on the bottom have a switch. So let's turn it off. Sorry about the static. Zero nine five. Now see, that's that's channel one in Japan. That's a much cleaner signal for us, right? And that's off this unit that was working. I mean that's pretty clean. Oh, bullshit. Would you pay $500 for this? I didn't pay that much. I paid about $350 for this. Seriously. Although I did get a free console with it. If you want to look at it like that. It's actually not a terrible game. This control is not great. It's kind of cheap. It's probably pretty worn, but it, it works. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, let me pause it really quick so you don't get too much static. I'm going to switch units and see if we can get the other one to work. So it didn't work initially. Yeah, so I just tried it and it didn't work. Uh, it, it looks like I opened it up and it looks like it might have had a bad capacitor. There was some uh, fluid, maybe even a burnt resistor. So I wasn't able to get a good picture out of that one. It, I can hear the sound. So the processors and everything were working properly. Um, but the, the picture is just not coming in. So that one probably needs to uh, have some work on it. But um, probably not a big deal since the microprocessors are still functional. Uh, you know, somebody just has to solder on some new capacitors and that sort of thing. Probably a new resistor or a, tra a transistor. Um, so anyway, that was the Gakin uh, Compact Vision TV Boy. It's very rare uh, or uncommon, as I like to say. Um, 